Hi, my name is Amy Howard. Today I want to show you how to be able to use one of our brand new products called Stencil Embossing Cream. The great thing about rescuing and restoring furniture is that we've made it so easy with the one step paint. Now we're going to take it one step further. For a lot of us that don't really have the ability to be able to draw and be able to paint, and we love those embellishments and we love the value that that adds to a piece of painted furniture, we've made it very, very simple. So if you've enjoyed the process of rescuing and restoring, be able to get that piece to a painted state much like this little piece of trim that I'm showing you. This is painted in one of our new colors um, and I love the name of it. Gray is all over Pinterest if you've noticed. Gray is huge for 2015 and we call it a good man is hard to find. So I've painted my little piece of trim in um, this beautiful gray and I'm going to take one of our stencils. Now of course you can get stencils just about anywhere of course, if you have a Cricut, you can make the stencil yourself. So you want to be able to use a stencil that's at least 10 millimeter. That way it's thick enough and it's not going to be able to uh, go up and down too terribly much while you're working with the stencil cream because it is very thick. Basically, let's imagine that this would be a drawer front. Um, this could be a cabinet door front. I'm going to decide on what stencil design that I want to be able to use. This is one in our, out of our classic collection of our stencils. And I'm just going to lay this on top of my trim piece. And of course, many of you know as a decorative artist um, for many, many years, I've always worked on trim pieces first to be able to get an idea of not only my color palette, the art that I wanted to be able to do, and what it was going to look like as a final look. That way I turn around and I do that on my piece of furniture. So. I'm going to also take a plastic spatula. You can use um, a rubber spatula. There are some great icing tools that people use on cakes with icing. Those are great too. So I'm going to basically go into my stencil cream. Of course you want to be able to hold down firmly or tape down the stencil design that you're going to be working with. And I'm going to lay down my spatula like this. Of course the harder you press uh, the more risk you're, you're going to run of bleeding. So you want to make sure that there's not too much pressure but that it's very even. And try to load up as much as possible so you can get all of it done in about two passes like this. I'm just going to clean up that other side. And then very carefully, still holding it down with the left hand, I'm going to raise it with my right. And there I've got a beautiful detail of my art. Now I can come back and make it a little bit heavier. I can do another application. Remember, depending on how thick you make the raised element of the art, the wax and the antiquing that you decide to do is gonna make it show up even better. This is um, a piece of trim that I did just a few minutes ago trying to get ready to be able to show you how to do it. And I did do it with one pass. It's not too terribly thick, um, but I wanna be able to show you what it can look like once you go through the waxing process. So I'm going to take my light antique wax and I want to come back and just do a nice even application. Always you'll notice we're working with um, moving our wrist. We don't want to apply our waxes in lines like this. We don't ever want to see the type of tool or the size of tool that we use. It's going to take about 45 minutes for this to dry. Of course, the thicker you get it, the longer it's going to take for it to dry um, before you work on it. Now in the studio, when we're working on samples or even on a piece of furniture that we want to speed up the process in a teaching venue, we will hit it with a hair dryer. And I do want to make sure that I keep the hair dryer about um, 11 or 12 inches away from my piece. But the caveat to that is it could possibly crack on you. A lot of people say, I like it to crack. If you do, then that way you can put the heat of a hair dryer on it. But my suggestion would be to let it be able to dry um, with an air dryer, which would take up to 45 minutes. So you'll notice I've put on my light antique wax. I need to allow it to get to a point of what we call tack, T-A-C-K. And I live in Memphis, Tennessee, so the humidity is pretty high here. And I've noticed in the fall and in the spring that I can come to tack with my wax if it's put on nice, it's generous, um, and it is 100% coverage. I need to allow about 20 minutes for it to be able to get to that tack point. 
So take that into consideration depending on the region or the part of the country that you live in. So you, you'll touch it and you'll be able to tell if it's still moving, if it's still very greasy and some of the wax comes off on your fingers, then it's not completely to tack. It'll feel cool, but it won't be moving. So a lot of times, especially if I'm, um, I'm speeding up the process and working on a sample piece, I'll fan it just a little bit with my cardboard and then I can tell that it's not moving around and it's ready for my dark antique wax application. Now, depending on what color that you're working on, if you're, and you're using the embossing cream, you don't have to use the dark wax. The dark wax is only intended for adding some age, some detail to the relief on the art. And let me just show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna take my dark wax here, always, offloading it. I never want to go from my dark wax directly on my piece of furniture. So I'm going to offload it just a little bit and you'll notice as I'm moving it I'm making sure that it's it's got a nice even coverage on the brush and then I'm going to come back on my piece. Now remember I'm thinking this is possibly a drawer to a piece so I'm going to start around the center of it, of it first. Never go to the inside of the piece of furniture, your drawer, your door, whatever. So I'm going to start on the outside, constantly turning my wrist. You'll see now part of the reason why we want to make sure that our light wax application gets to tack is because if it's still really wet and really greasy, when I go to put on the dark wax, it's going to make a third color. And we want to be able to have the dark wax where it's sitting on top of the light wax um, just to be able to accentuate it. So you can always add more, but if I try to come back and take some off, it's just going to look like a dead visual finish. It, it kind of looks like mush. So you'll see now as I've started to get the the color on the outside, I'll work my way in. And what's so beautiful about the stencil embossing cream is that it acts as these raised elements that my dark wax start to have this really beautiful finish. I love gilding on top of my um, embossed areas. That detail makes it so pretty. I do wanna make sure that when you're doing the dark antique wax, the same, the same scenario is gonna work as far as making sure that you're to tack again. But because we put it on so thin and because it's more of a dry brushing technique, it's gonna dry really quickly. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my dust of ages, which you'll notice a lot of times when I do the, um, the videos, I'm usually working on carved pieces this allows you to be able to see that the dust of ages can make a huge difference even on a flat surface, but we've got a beautiful raised detail with the stencil embossing cream. So I'm gonna take one of my lint-free rags. I tell people to, it's great to be able to use t-shirt materials that you can uh, cut up and wash them because we wanna make sure that they're lint-free. And a lot of times I'll take the dust of ages and I'll literally take my fingers and just go into the raised areas because I don't want to get rid of all of it. Just kind of grinds it down into that finish and makes it look really pretty. And remember we want to be able to buff the wax kind of like we would a shoe. I loved the excitement of just coming back from market and it was a lot of fun because we had our boutique retailers there and being able to see them work with the embossing cream with a lot of the stencils and literally within seconds to be able to have beautiful art, very classic, very detailed, literally can transform your furniture that you're working on with really no art expertise at all. So I hope you'll experiment with it, see how much fun it can be, see how it's going to raise literally your level of connoisseurship, but also the perceived value of the pieces of furniture that you're gonna be painting. So now go enjoy the bragging.